Welcome to this uh, video on systematic literature reviews. My name is Rüdiger Hahn. I'm a professor in sustainability management. And this is the third of three videos on uh, systematic literature review papers. And this one specifically about how to code papers, how to report on findings, and how to uh, make a contribution in the discussion of such papers. So let's have a brief look at these three videos that I recorded. The first one was on why to do literature reviews, what types of literature reviews are there, and how can you formulate an adequate research question that actually gears towards the literature. The second one was on what search strategies are out there and how can you use them and how can you report on the method in your paper. And this one here is on how can I code articles for literature reviews, how can I report on results and how to um, actually make a significant contribution uh, that makes it through a review process um, eventually. So let's have a look first at the coding, the actual coding of the articles that you have in your uh, um, in your sample, and that is actually very context specific. So that might be completely different from one to the other review, depending on the type of articles that you have, uh, depending on the field that you're working in, and so on. So it can just give you some rather general hints and advice. Uh, so the first question would be whether you want to engage in a deductive or an inductive coding. So the, the first approach is a deductive coding. That means that you have uh, some predetermined uh, categories according to which you code the respective papers that you have. Uh, that is something that you very often do, for example, for the descriptive statistics on your body of literature, for example, the year of the respective um, papers, the methods, geography of authors or of data, and so on and so on and so on. Um, the deductive coding might be also uh, relevant for content coding, so not only for the descriptors, but really for the research question, for the theory in use, um, for the findings of the respective papers, the topics, and so on. But that is rather the case in uh, like specific cases and when um, the keyword search and the uh, selection criteria for your um, research, for your um, for your sample of literature were previously adapted to like specific approaches, for example, based on a very specific theory that you want to use to deductively code later on. So you have to go hand in hand here, usually with the selection of the of the literature of your body of literature and the coding if you want to go deductive here as well. Otherwise, what you find very often is uh, some sort of inductive coding. Uh, that uh, it would be, to my understanding, the default option for most content analysis so that you go uh, with an open coding into the literacy. What does the literature offer to you? What, what findings do they report on? What are the limitations, for example? What theories do they use? Um, uh, what, what what research questions do you ask? Uh, do they ask? Uh, and so that you can then uh, abstract um, to the next level and provide some solid analysis on these aspects. Regarding deductive inductive coding, that is something that you can look at uh, at relevant um, method papers on many aspects of qualitative content analysis um, if you want to engage uh, more deeply in that. Next question is uh, whether there is any software you can use. You can use, of course, Excel. Uh, I mean, most of the time you just get um, your uh, data, so your sample, for example, from certain literature databases and I have other videos on how to use literature databases for these searches as well, if you're interested in that. Um, and with these databases, you very often export your data, for example, into uh, an Excel sheet. Uh, that's actually my personal default. Um, as it can actually bring you quite far without larger transaction costs working into any of these softwares that can be a powerful tool um, um, in general. There are also other software tools you can use. Uh, those are softwares that you can use or you usually use for uh, qualitative content analysis uh, in, in other instances, for example, for interview data, and you can use that for um, paper analysis as well. For example, MaxQDA, Vivo, Atlas TI, um, there are others out there as well. And they are to be used just like for any other qualitative data. Um, and you find tutorials out there and method articles on these um, in bulk out there on the internet. 
And finally, you can also nowadays use some AI tools. I have to admit that I didn't try them so far, so I do not have any experience with that. But I think it's interesting, especially in the future, and I'm pretty sure that I'll look at that as well. I know that there are some examples here I um, mentioned here, and but the, the field is, is evolving so fast so that you probably have to look uh, um, for your own um, experiences for, for tools that you can use once you um, yeah, actually start doing your research and doing your literature review um, and see what's out there at that point of time. Um, these tools can be potentially useful for coding the articles, but also for the preceding search for your uh, body of literature, which I um, uh, deal with in the previous video, in the second video of this uh, series here. And then there's the question of how to report on the findings. Uh, what are interesting findings of a literature review? And my most important advice here first is do not merely summarize or even worse, re-narrate uh, the, the findings of the literature that you're analyzing. Just summarizing or re-narrating doesn't make good findings. Really try to be as analytical as possible. And again, that's very context specific, so it's difficult to give some concrete advice here. But just remember that analytics really doesn't stop at descriptives. Um, and, and that's the same for a systematic literature review as it is in any empirical study. So just don't count. Don't count simply the methods or the journal outlets, geographic origins or citations. Of course, these descriptors can be interesting. They can be part of a short chapter, um, but only a short chapter, though, and they shouldn't be the bulk. So a counting review is usually not just a good review and also not a review that just um, yeah, um, simply summarizes what's in the literature. Some options, what you could do, and they are not exhaustive, you could try to identify and analyze main topics in the literature, relationships that are reported on, is there agreement or are there any contradictions and where do they come from? Maybe they have different types of methods. Uh, maybe it's limitations in the data that some papers, papers have or so on. Identify shortcomings and gaps in the literature because you can build on that later on. I'm talking about that in our next slide. Um, have a look at what are the theoretical contributions maybe that the papers are doing, what are the methodological approaches and so on. One suggestion, one hint that I can give you is try to come up with some tables or figures. Of course, they should be useful tables and figures and not again, not just in descriptives, but really like content related tables and figures that show coherences um, and so on because they can force you sometimes to be more analytical than just writing a text. But that again depends a bit on your approach, on your field, on the literature and so on. And then finally, one of the most important questions, how to actually make a contribution. What do you do in the um, discussion of the paper as well? So usually analysis and discussion tie in. I mean, that's again the same in every paper. It doesn't have to be a literature review. Uh, so based on your analysis, you need to provide some added value above and beyond what you have in your sample. And it's again very context specific, so I can just give you some non-exhaustive options here. For example, you could explain coherences of a fragmented field through a bird's eye perspective, for example, by providing a framework or a model which you derive from your knowledge now of a fragmented body of literature. Or you could adjust uh, and complement existing theories or link theories from different fields that you find in the literature or even come up with um, with theories from other fields that you think might bring the, the field that you are looking at to the next level and that is still missing in literature. Or you could develop a structured research agenda with concrete research questions, maybe with outlooks on methods. Or you could scrutinize critical gaps in the literature, aspects in literature that you think are most important. That would be some, again, non-exhaustive options for what you could do uh, in the discussion to really make a contribution with a literature review article. 
At the bottom here of this page, there are links to different articles that give you some further insights of what you could do to really make a contribution. I think they're really relevant and interesting, and I put them in the description if you're interested. So that's it. That was the last of three parts here on my few takeaways on systematic literature reviews. I hope that was helpful for you, and I wish you all the best for your own reviews.